Hello and welcome to this section of the TI-89 Calculator Tutor. And uh, in this section and pretty much from here on out, we are going to dive into some of the most powerful features of the calculator. Uh, in the previous lessons we've covered quite a bit of material. We've covered the basic graphing abilities, we've covered the algebra abilities in here and how to uh, manipulate expressions. And here in this section we're going to start talking about calculus, which um, you know, it's just fantastic to have it in your pocket whenever you're on an exam to check your work. So the calculus menu is up here in F3, and you'll see that you can uh, take derivatives and integrals, and we're going to go down here and learn about all of these things. And in this section, we're going to concentrate on taking the derivative of a uh, expression. So I could stop here and say, hey, here's the derivative function. Great, you know how to do that now. But that isn't very instructive. So what I want to do is show you some examples. All you need to do to take a derivative in this calculator is go up to that calc menu, hit enter, and stick this down here uh, on the stack. And it says D in parentheses. D means derivative. So what you need to do is type an expression here inside the parentheses. So let's take a derivative that all of us really understand already. X squared. Okay. Now, all of you should know if you're taking calculus how to take the derivative of x squared. The answer is 2 times x. But if you close the parentheses off and hit enter, it's going to give you an error. And the reason it's going to give you an error is because the calculator knows we want to take the derivative of x squared, but we haven't really explicitly told it which variable we want to take the derivative with respect to. And I know that sounds a little bit crazy, but what you need to do to fix it is put a comma and then x. You can kind of think of this as back when we were solving algebraic equations up here and we told it the equation to solve but then we had to actually tell it to solve for x because you got to realize this is a little computer. It's programmed. It's following rules. If we don't tell it what to take the derivative with respect to x, it's simply not going to know and so it's not going to know what to do. Now later on when you get into calculus 2 and calculus 3 you'll learn about partial derivatives. This becomes even more important, putting the comma in the variable. So for now, if you're in Calculus 1, just remember, whatever function you put here, it could be anything, you have to put a comma x to take the derivative of this guy with respect to that. So if we hit enter, it thinks for a second and it puts 2x. So really, honestly, it's, it's really that easy. All you have to do is stick a derivative on the stack, type in your expression, and here you go. Let's see if, we, if it knows what the derivative of sine of x is. So we close the sine function off. Now we have to hit comma x. It's the only gotcha that you really have to remember. Uh, and that's cosine x, x. Let's look at something a little more complicated. Let's go up here to derivative of tangent of x. And close it off like this. And I put one too many parentheses in. So I'll back that guy out. So derivative of tangent is 1 over cosine squared. Now this is written a little bit different than um, than you might see in your book. You know in most calculus books this is not going to, the derivative of the tangent function is not going to be written like this. It's going to be written as secant squared. Uh, derivative of tangent is secant squared. But when you think about it, secant uh, is just 1 over cosine. So if you have secant squared it's the same as 1 over cosine squared. So I'm just bringing this up to tell you that especially when you start dealing with the trigonometric functions and mixing trig functions in with everything else, um, the calculator might return an answer that's slightly different than what you think the answer should be. So the calculator is really always going to be right with this stuff. It's just that it may not be quite simplified the way that you might simplify it. So let's go and clear this stuff off and let's get, let's get a little bit more complicated to show you a few more tricks. Uh, let's let's see if it understands the uh, product rule and the sum rules, for instance. So let's do 2 times x squared, uh, and we'll add to that 4 times x plus 2, and we'll put a comma x because we want it to take a derivative with respect to x. So 2x squared plus 4x plus 2. Simple derivative in calculus 1. You should know that you take the derivative of each term separately, and add them together for the final result. So we hit enter and almost instantaneously it comes out with the correct answer. The derivative of this first term, 2 times 2 is 4, so we have 4x right here. And the derivative of this term is just going to be 4 because it's the only thing sitting in front of the x. And that's what we have here. The derivative of a constant is 0. 
And if some of this isn't quite making sense to you, if it's not coming off the tip of your tongue, it's either because you're not in calculus or maybe you're not really comfortable with the rules of differentiation. So go off and get one of the uh, calculus tutorials to, to brush up on that. But this, this derivative here is just a simple polynomial. It's actually a really easy derivative to take once you know the technique. But the calculator can handle it uh, without any problem. Uh, so that's the sum rule. Uh, let's go in here really quickly and see if it understands the product rule. Uh, let's see if we have, let's do x, uh, x times the sine of x. And I again put another set of parentheses in there by accident, so we'll put comma x and close it off. So we have two functions here and they're multiplied together. x is a function of x, sine of x is a function of x. So we've multiplied two, two functions. So the way you take this derivative is you take the first term times the derivative of the second plus the second term times the derivative of the first term. So let's hit enter and it thinks comes up with the correct answer. First term times the derivative of the second. Derivative of sine is cosine. So that's what we have. Plus the second term right here times the derivative of the first term which is just one. That's why there's nothing else here because it's multiplied times one. So it understands product rules and uh, I bet you could guess it understands quotient rules and all the other things. Really quickly I want to show you uh, the chain rule in this guy. So let's put uh, sine of and inside of the sine function let's wrap an x cubed in there. Just as a simple example of how it knows how to do this, comma x. So here we have a nested function. We have the sine function and inside is the argument we have another function, x cubed. So that's called the chain rule. The way you handle it is you take the outside derivative first, the sine function, derivative of that is cosine, and you have to multiply times the derivative of the function on the inside. So we hit enter and we get the answer. So we have derivative of sine is cosine, keep the same argument, x cubed, times the derivative of whatever is in the middle, which is going to be 3x squared, which is sitting out in front. So it understands basically all of the rules of differentiation is the bottom line. It understands uh, pro product rule, quotient rule, uh, chain rule, uh, but the beauty of a calculator like this is it can do some really gnarly calculations that would really take you a lot of time by hand. For instance, let's do sine of x cubed like this and let's divide it by something crazy. Let's put a set of parentheses on the bottom. Let's throw a natural logarithm in there of x. Uh, actually, let's make it even harder, x squared inside of the natural logarithm. Uh, and then outside of that, we'll multiply that times uh, x squared and then we'll multiply that times sine of x. So if you've done derivatives for any length of time, you should know that this would be really difficult because we've got a big division in here. So you have a big numerator and a big denominator. It's not like it's, it's impossible. It's just that you have so many terms, you have to really keep track of them all. So we hit enter and it says may take longer. Um, domain result may be larger. It's just giving you a caution. It's doing its best to, to simplify and to do the derivative of this, of this complicated thing. Uh, basically it's saying double check my work. Uh, but you can see that this very large expression when you take the derivative yields a result that's extremely long. So this expression is quite lengthy and involved. I mean, just look how long it goes. And you know the nice thing about rules of derivatives is that they're all very concrete. I mean if you know how to take derivatives you can take derivative of any function you want. There's not that much technique to it. But the problem is that uh, there is a lot of skill to it because uh, because you can make a lot of mistakes. So you can see how an expression like this could cause you to work all day to make sure all these exponents are correct. All right. So the bottom line is the calculator takes care of all the stuff behind the scenes. You don't need to worry about, I mean, you need to know it for your class, but you don't need to worry about telling it to use the chain rule or telling it to use product rule or whatever. You just type an expression in and it's going to know how to take the derivative of that guy. And by and large, you'll be able to trust the results. So that's a really good thing. Now one more thing I want to show you. Let's take the derivative and stick it back on the stack and do something really easy again like x cubed. Um, a lot of times you want to know what the value of a derivative is at a certain point. So you see what you're doing is you're, you've got a function here x cubed. When we take the derivative the answer is 3x squared. But a lot of times and notice that what it what it gave us was another function back. This function describes the slope of the original function at every point. That's what a derivative is. Make sure you understand that. So this is the original function. 
the answer that we get for the derivative is just another function. The value of this derivative at any point x is just telling us how steep this original function is at the same value of x. So basically this guy, this derivative, tells us the slope of the original curve everywhere. But a lot of times you're really only interested in knowing the derivative at one point. Like maybe we want to know how, forget about this, cover this up with your finger for a second. Maybe we want to know, actually I'll, I'll help you out even a little bit more. We'll just put it, we'll just put it back on there because it's not, not a big deal. We'll do x cubed comma x. Uh, what we want to know, let's say, is we want to know what is the derivative of this function at like x is equal to 2. Uh, but only at x is equal to 2. What's the value of the slope, in other words? What is the slope of the line tangent to this curve at x is equal to 2? Well, there's an easy way to do that in the calculator. The easiest way by hand is just take the derivative of it. Here's the answer. Plug in x is equal to 2 into the answer. So 2 squared is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. So the answer is 12. The slope of this curve at x is equal to 2 is a value of 12. 12 is a fairly steep slope, so you can see x cubed is starting to get really steep there, this function. But if you want to let the calculator do the heavy lifting, all you have to do is highlight the answer, hit enter to put it on the stack, and this is a really nifty trick. Press this button, this vertical bar, uh, and this means that we're going to do a substitution. And just put x is equal to 2. This little vertical bar is called a pipe symbol, and it means it kind of separates the front thing from the from the back thing. What it really means is take this expression and plug into it x is equal to 2 and give me the answer. And the answer is 12, which is exactly what we calculated by hand. Right? But obviously that was a pretty easy derivative, so I could do that in my head. But what if I had something like sine of x to the ninth power uh, divided by uh, x to the power of, and open up another set of parentheses, of cosine of x. Just something crazy. I mean, we'll just do something. Since we're using a calculator, we can do whatever we want. It's going to be able to handle it for us. Uh, now, look at that derivative. That's pretty complicated, right? You've got a quotient, something on the top and something on the bottom. But what I've given you on the bottom is really complicated because I've got uh, x raised to the power of cosine x. So all we have to do is take the take the derivative of this guy, and notice this very lengthy expression that it gave us, and that's just because of what I have. It was a very complicated derivative, right? It doesn't look that complicated, but it sure is. Take the answer, stick it on the stack, notice it scrolls off the screen because it's so big, hit the vertical pipe symbol, x is equal to, let's say I'm, I in, I'm interested in what, what, what's going on at x is equal to 3.5. What is the the uh, slope of this curve, or the slope of the line tangent to this curve at x is equal to 3.5. Hit enter, it'll plug it all in there, and it'll give me a look at this incredibly steep slope, 50, uh, 526,275. Now one more thing I'll show you. Uh, you can actually kind of combine these two things. What I've been doing is I've been taking the derivative, getting the answer, and then putting the answer on the stack, and then piping in x is equal to 3.5. But actually, I don't that's actually probably better in my opinion to show all of your work but really you don't even have to do all of that you can just stick the original problem on the stack this is the original derivative we function that we typed in to calculate the derivative instead of getting the answer and then sending a value of x we can just put this on the stack and hit the pipe symbol x is equal to 3.5 and what the calculator will do is it'll go find the derivative and then it will plug in x is equal to 3.5 and it'll just return a number to you so it does it the calculation notice how it writes it all pretty for you it's taking the derivative of this lengthy function plugging in x is equal to 3.5 and getting the same result so the only difference is in one step we just did an intermediate answer which is really useful especially if you're checking your work but the calculator doesn't need to do all that stuff you can just pipe it in and, and plug it in and this little uh, this little symbol like this is going to work with pretty much anything the calculator does if the calculator is doing a operation and returning another function and you want to evaluate that function at a particular uh, value of x you can always do this vertical pipe and then uh, uh, plug in the value of x like that basically so that is how to take derivatives with the TI-89 calculator. It's actually very, very easy. I could have truncated the section to three minutes and, and gotten the gist of it across, but I really wanted to give you some practice with it so that you'll feel comfortable using it. Uh, please take some time to learn how to do this. If you're on a calculus test and you don't know how to uh, check your work, 
um, you're really passing up an opportunity to eliminate uh, simple errors. And so I encourage you to, to look at that and be ready for that and use it on your exams.